Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the AAS YouTube channel. And this is part of the good stuff. This is the AAS Journal author series. And I am super happy to have Federico Gaston Lopez Armengal with us today. Hi, Frank. How are you? Hi, everybody. Hi doing super well today on this uh, Tuesday, April 19th of 2022, as we record this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in Phoenix, and summer is right around the corner in Phoenix. We will probably hit, uh, uh, we won't hit triple digits Fahrenheit today, but we will get close to that. Okay. Um, something around 30C or something on, on those orders. Um, and where are you Look located, Federico? I'm, I'm, I'm currently in Rochester, New York, oh, okay. uh, upstate New York. So yeah, here spring hasn't actually hasn't quite uh, got there arrived. Yeah. So <laughs> actually, well, it's been a bit crazy on, even on Sunday, we got uh, some snow. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and today it's a, uh, it's pretty cloudy and we expect some, maybe some more snow. It'll, it'll, it'll turn soon. It'll turn mm -hmm. soon. Yeah, when it does, it's, it's beautiful here. It's beautiful. It'll be great. Um, yeah, I actually have grapevines growing on my, my wall. I grow, I grow grapes. Um, and they're all budding and getting their little flowers going, and little grapes are starting to form. It's all great. Okay. I haven't made wine, wine yet. So that's a, that's a, future, uh, a future one to make my own uh, Arizona wine here. So. Nice. <laughs> cool. Nice, nice. Federico, what do you like to do for research? So I'm, I work on mainly on numerical relativity and general relativistic magnetohydrodynamic simulations. Cool. Uh, so yeah, big simulations on on the the big machines we have here in in the US. Very <laughs> and, cool. Very cool. Yeah, and in different in different physical systems, um, binary neutron stars, binary black holes. Yep. And, Hot topic these days. Yeah, huh? or compact objects uh, mm -hmm. yep. simulations. Yep. And that is going to bring us to this very awesome APJ article. It's open access, people. You can go get it. Circumbinary disk accretion into spinning black hole binaries. And Federico, take us away. OK, thanks, Frank. Uh, so yeah, let's start with some, some context. Uh, and I think a great idea is explaining the title. <laughs> so this word circumbinary disk um, what we mean is uh, a disk that it's around a binary system. And the binary systems that we are interested on are the supermassive binary black holes. Uh, you may be are familiar with, with binary black holes of uh, stellar mass because LIGO has detected gravitational waves from, from many of them. Mm -hmm. But there are also supermassive binary black holes around. Uh, these are um, black holes that uh, binary black holes that um, form after two galaxies merge. Mm -hmm. So we we know that galaxies merge uh, very frequently, and we expect that the, the black holes in its centers will come together and eventually merge. Um, okay. We don't have quite um, exact confirmation of these uh, mergers because we, we cannot yet detect gravitational waves from these uh, systems. There is there's great efforts in this um, in this um, right. in these projects, like from pulsar timing or in the future uh, Lisa, mm -hmm. but we still haven't got there. And what we are interested in is on simulating this this system because unlike uh, stellar uh, mass binary black holes, the supermassive case is uh, usually surrounded by matter. So. Uh, you know, in the center of merged galaxies, there is a lot of matter flo floating around. Yep. So we also expect these systems will emit a, a lot of light uh, besides gravitational waves. So we're, we're trying to move um, ahead of the gravitational wave detection and to cool. detect the, the emissions of, of light from, this, from these binaries. Predictions, predictions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's um, a circumbinary disk. We were, in this work, we're modeling uh, an accretion disk around a binary system of, of supermassive black holes. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe to, to give a sense of this, of this uh, simulation, you can jump down to figure, wait, let me, it's quite at the bottom actually, but yeah, figure 11 actually. Figure 11, let's go to figure yeah. 11. <laughs> Just to give a snapshot of how this, All good. this systems looks. Beautiful, beautiful. Here yep. we are. 
So there you have the the two black holes in the yeah the black dots in the middle and all the the matters surrounding them. That's what we call the the circumbinary disk. Okay. And this is what the this paper is about about the the emission of this of this disk. Okay. And um, uh, the black holes are treated as point masses here. Yes. So they are treated as point masses. So now it, it comes all the, the methods in this paper. Mm -hmm. So for doing these simulations, we need um, quite a few things. First of all, we need a space-time metric because this is um, very, a very relativistic uh, system. We cannot do uh, Newtonian uh, gravity. So the, the first thing we need to address is how to build a, a space-time metric uh, to evolve matter on top. And in this sense, our group had, had taken a, mm. um, let's say, um, a pragmatic approach. Um, since these uh, black holes are not so close to each other, we don't have to do full numerical relativity. We don't have to integrate the Einstein field equation exactly. We can do some approximation on the, on the metric. Okay. And, and that's the first um, okay. uh, thing that we do in this paper. So now I'll ask you to come back to yeah. section two. All good. Section two. Uh, we actually... Well, I guess you're going to say here, so I'll be quiet for a minute. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in section two, we explain how we build a, a space-time approximation mm -hmm. for this system. So we start from a single black hole in the Kerr shield uh, gauge. That's equation one. Yep. And as you can see, this is very convenient because uh, the, the form of this uh, gauge, the, the, of, of, this, of the black hole metric in this gauge, is separated in two terms. The first one is the background, the Minkowski um, space time. And the second one, it's uh, the, the black hole term, when we have all the, the information of the black hole that goes to zero in, at infinity. Okay. So our idea to build a binary black hole approximation for mm -hmm. the metric is to just superpose two terms, one for each black hole, and to uh, boost them in a, in a circular orbit. So if you go ahead, uh, two subsections, around 2.3, mm -hmm. they are 2.3, equation 11. You'll see that we have our approximate metric. Uh -huh. It's basically the first term is just the background Mikoski, uh -huh. and then we have two terms for each black hole. Okay. Um, so this is an approximation for the space-time. We are not doing full numerical relativity, but this allows us to uh, optimize our simulations a lot, a lot, a lot, and we can actually evolve uh, for many, many orbits of the of the system. Right. And so in that, that figure eleven, for example, it's not like the black holes are colliding. At least no, no. We are just right. they are fairly separated, and yeah. mm -hmm. we are neglecting the the in spiral. Mm -hmm. And we want to see how how the circumbinary relaxes around this this um, this yep. binary. Okay, I'm with you. Yep. So then now, uh, well, basically we set the the circumbinary disk and we evolve this metric for for a very long time. And okay. and if you go down to equation two, sorry, to figure. Oh, well, we have actually, let me say that yeah. we have a, a, actually validation of this uh, metric. We are not just uh, putting it in. Uh, we are checking that it actually satisfies uh, Einstein equations, at least approximately. So down, a bit down on, on figure, the next figure. Okay. And this one, the big global. Okay. Yes. There we go. It's a big figure where we calculate, right. There we calculate the Ricci scalar of this metric, which is supposed to be zero because it's um, it's uh, just it's vacuum, and what we see is that it's far away in the first row. It's uh, about around ten to the minus seven, which is a, a very good approximation for the for the Ricci scalar. Uh -huh. I mean, we, we won't get a zero because this is uh, all numerical, but um, it's uh -huh. pretty low. Yeah. Uh, then we have a zoom in in the in the orbital region okay. mm -hmm. and sure. it's again staying fairly fairly low so that's saying that 
the metric is a well approximation for for a solution of Einstein equations. And okay, good. And then in the last row we have a zoom in close to the to each black hole to uh, to, to one of the black holes. Yeah. And the difference, let me say here between these three three columns, is uh, the spin of the black holes. So this um, this metric allow us to uh, to freely set the spin of, of the black holes. And the row on the, the sorry the column on the left has a spin of minus 0.9, which is very high. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the column on the right has a spin of 0.9, uh, so positive. Mm -hmm. yep. And the, in the middle, it has spin zero. Okay. And uh, this uh, gray circle is the horizon of the, of the black hole. So, Ooh, okay. Yeah. Um, cool. mm -hmm. So, sorry, the, 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 the one on the bottom. The, the, actually, the dashed gray is, is, uh, is another thing, but. Um, okay, so right that here. That one is, yeah, that's the, the horizon. So, okay. mm -hmm. okay. so in this section, we just validate the metric that it's a good approximation, and we okay. prove that we can use arbitrary spins in the in the black holes, which, which is a great thing to, to have. Um, what, is the, what, is the, yeah, what is the tool you're using for this? What is the simulation tool? So, so far, we haven't talked about a simulation. This is just a calculation of Ricci. Scalar, but okay. now that we validate the metric and we are going to proceed to the simulation, okay. we are going to use a code a code called Harm 3D. Yes, uh, that evolves the the general relativistic magnetohydrodynamic equation uh, in on top of this metric. Cool, got it. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, this part is just space time validation, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and since everything looks good, we proceed to the to the actual simulation. And, and yeah, we just uh, set, as I said, a circumbinary disk, and we will evolve the, the circumbinary disk on top of this, of this, of this metric, okay. of this approximate metric. I'm with you. And, and well, in this first paper of, on, on this series, uh, we focused on the circumbinary. We didn't focus on what happened close to each black hole. Yes. So we excised all the, the orbital region. That's the, the dashed um, circle in the middle of the, in the middle row. So we are not including the, uh, the region inside that circle in our simulation. We are just focusing on the, on the circumbinary disk. Got it, um, okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, within this, cir this circle, a lot of things happen, uh, but this is a matter of, of our next article. All right. Um, okay. Yep. So if you uh, go ahead to the simulations, um, um, oh, sorry, I missed the, yeah. If you go down, uh, this figure two is just a, a, a convergence test. We, we did this calculation of the Ricci for different resolutions and oh. we just have to reproduce uh, a, a, a four because we use fourth order finite difference. Yes. So yeah, just more validations for the, for the mm -hmm. metric, which believe me, it's it's very good. <laughs> so we can proceed to the to the MHD uh, simulation. Yes, even harm. Yeah, this is how we set the initial the initial data, and we can talk about uh, this plot. So we set the initial data of the circumbinary disk, and we see how the disk starts to be accreted into the, okay. into the, into the binary. Yes. Um, this is a magnetized disk. So we expect the magnetorotational instability to, to happen or MRI. Uh, this is an instability that triggers accretion in, in accretion disks. And well, it's a well-known result that MRI usually grow at, uh, at the beginning. Uh, it has, it reaches a maximum and then it relaxes, uh -huh. uh, the fluid becomes very turbulent and it, it reaches a steady state, which in this plot is the, the third uh, region after mm -hmm. 75,000 M in time, or after around 140 orbits uh, of, the, of the system. Right. So that, is, uh... that's, right, that's the, the, the region where we're interested in, on right. the steady state. Yeah. And it's, uh... Uh, uh, episodic almost. Yes, and that's all of them. 
that's very interesting yes. uh, things that we, we found. And uh -huh. as you can see on top of this figure, we evolved this for more than 250 orbits. Uh -huh. So each orbit is uh, a black hole coming back to its initial position. Uh -huh. And and this is a lot. This is a lot of, of orbits. Uh, if you do yes, full numerical relativity, you probably cannot do this. Uh, so that's that's the convenience of using an mm -hmm. approximate metric yep. for the space time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's why we can reach this steady state and we can actually focus our predictions on this uh, on this steady state. We, we don't uh, we don't worry about what happened before, uh, which is a bit of a transient. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, the, the next thing in the paper, we, we focus on this steady state and we explore uh, the, the main thing of this article is to see how the, um, the spins of the black hole, uh, either they are uh, up, up or down, down, how the spins affect the, the circumbinary disk okay. mm -hmm. evolution. And cool. that's why we have uh, B20, 20 is the separation, uh, B20 minus spins, B20 uh, without spins and B20 plus spins. That's the, the labels in this, in this figure. Got it. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, basically then the first part of, of the, our results focus on how spin affects the, the, um, the accretion of the, of the circumbinary. And cool. what we found, if you, um, well, you can see it already in this figure, what we found is that the, the, the case of minus spins, where spins are anti-aligned with the, with the binary, uh -huh. they actually uh, um, capture much more uh, of, of the circumbinary. Actually, uh, accretion, accretion is enhanced by, by negative spins. Uh, somehow, the, the angular momentum uh, of, the, of the black holes being opposite to the, to the orbital angular momentum uh, work as uh, as an uh, extra uh, um, attraction for for matter, and we we found that accretion is higher for for minus spins cool. uh, if compared to to zero spins or even uh, plus spins. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Very cool. Progress mm -hmm. versus retrograde. Okay. Yeah, progress versus uh, retrograde. So. That's kind of the main the main results of the of the article, and we offer a lot of interpretation of what's happening. Um, so, so yeah, we can we can also talk about that interpretations if you're interested I on that, or, or we can <laughs> get to the numbers. <laughs> yeah, it's there are plenty of things to talk. So yeah, so um, uh, okay. So let me ask: Is there uh... Okay, so this is coming in on gray. So you might expect some observational signatures from here, perhaps in high energy bands. Right, yeah, you have a luminosity blot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's that. on figure four. Ah, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't look. Yeah, so here we have luminosity plots. Uh, this is bolometric, so integrated yeah. in all, all frequencies. Mm -hmm. And you can see that in the steady state part, which, which is after, let, let's say, uh, 80,000 here it's after the number eight Yes. in the X axis. You can see that minus spins, it's uh, higher. Uh, you can see that the orange curve, which doesn't have a spins, is about in the middle. Mm -hmm. And you can see that post plus spins, it's on, nice. on the bottom. So mm -hmm. this is again related to how negative spins uh, increase accretion and increase all the, all the uh, the, the, the luminosity of the system. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. This is uh, uh, very nice separation there of uh, spin. Mm -hmm. nice. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, we expect the, the negative spins to be much uh, much brighter. So what's happening is that um, in these systems, uh, the uh, these accretion disks are are very interesting kind of disks because on the one side you have accretion, you have the the, the the disk that wants to fall in, but at the same time you have a binary system in the middle, and the binary systems make a lot of of, of torques of angular momentum transfer in the opposite direction. Yes, yes. So the disk doesn't know if to fall or, or to go out. <laughs> yes. It's like a combination of accretion and, and excretion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and cool. and negative spins help uh, to 
to, to, to accretion, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, because the, the, uh, the, the binary has a little less angular momentum and that triggers a bit more of accretion mm -hmm. and, and ergo uh, more luminosity. Yes, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, then we, we focused a bit more on, on the differences between these, these runs. If you go to figure six, Let's take a look at figure six. Uh, but, but it's all around the same concept of negative spins being uh, enhancing uh, the accretion process. So mm -hmm. this is um, is a residual plot of the density uh, compared with the, the positive spins. Sorry, compared with the case of non-spins. And you can see negative spins on the left is all red in the... Yeah. The middle, that's because there is more matter there because there is more accretion, basically. Uh -huh. On the opposite, for positive spins, all this region is blue. We have uh, less matter there than in the case of zero spins. Mm -hmm. That's because accretion is actually less in the, in the positive spin uh, case. Um, mm -hmm. Again, coming back to the idea, positive spins uh, kind of repel matter better and negative spins actually uh, work as, a, as an attractor. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why uh, we see this, this effect. But in either case, you get a nice, uh, you get a nice spiral. Oh yeah, yeah. Spiral wave pattern coming off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, these systems, um, actually it was, uh, there's been a lot of discussion in the past about if DC combinary disks were actually going to fall in the, in the binary because yeah, yeah. as i say there is a lot of mm -hmm. angular momentum mm -hmm. transferred to to the outside so at the beginning there was a, a argument saying that this binary disk won't fall in the in the binary it will stay uh, repelled yeah. but the, these multi-dimensional simulations show that the accretion happens but via uh, very narrow streams yes so yes yeah, so if you do like a one-dimensional analysis, you will get that no accretion will happen. But if you do the multi-dimensional multi picture, you will catch these narrow streams going into the into the black holes. Oh, and, and this is uh, this is a slice through a three D, or is this a two D calculation? Yeah, this is all three D. Three D slice. Okay. Magnetized. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, this is a 2D picture, but the, the simulation is three-dimensional. Just wanted to make that clear. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and in here, uh, at least in these calculations, then you don't, if there was a hardening of the binary, that's mm -hmm. that's not considered here because the metric is fixed. You've fixed your masses, so there's no hardening of the binary here. Exactly, yeah. We, we're, we're neglecting the effect of, of matter. Feedback. Mm -hmm. Feedback onto the space time, yes. Okay. Cool. Yes, there are other other teams work in the full numerical relativity scenario, but as I say, they missed so many orbits of yeah, the system. Yeah. They, they miss yeah. all the relaxation, so it's a, it's a trade off. Yes. Um, um, cool. So yeah, that's the, the basic results on, oh. on on what spins do to this to these systems. But uh, we can also comment on on the on the generality of these systems and. That's what we do on, on the next section, in section, uh, so it's the, actually the next subsection in this is 5.3. 5.3. Uh, yes, here we have a spin insensitive results. So some results that, uh, properties that don't depend on, on the spin, okay. but we want to report them because uh, they are uh, consistent with previous works and this validates our, mm -hmm. our new metric, right? Um, so one of the one of the things that I would like to to mention is that when you have uh, uh, these systems of of uh, equal mass binaries uh, and a circumbinary disk, uh, a very interesting asymmetry uh, uh, arises in the in the in the circumbinary, and uh, we call this the lump. And you can see this in figure That's right. in figure yes. eleven. Right. Right. Figure 11 here. Yeah, you can see here, this is, so on the top left is an initial um, uh, snapshot. Then on the top right, you have, uh, you start to see some kind of M equal one asymmetry on the, on the top of the, on the figure. 
Yep. And then on the on the bottom row, just you can see very clearly the, yep. the lamp. Wow. We call the lamp this m equal one asymmetry. Uh -huh. uh, that is a, an overdensity in the in the inner edge of the of the second binary. Okay. And yeah, this is a, a very interesting uh, feature because it gives very peculiar electromagnetic signatures. And and so we, we does most of the accretion happen through the lump? So uh, that's a great question. At the beginning, if you see on the top left, we have like two streams going in. Yes. But when the lamp forms, the cavity becomes very eccentric and all accretion happens from the lamp. So we have like, we move from two streams to just one stream oh, that's from the lamp. One. That's the M equal one mode. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. And, and the cavity becomes like eccentric and loop sided. And oh, yeah. And you can see that here, right? I mean, that's, yeah. not, that's not as smooth as that one or as symmetrical mm -hmm. as that one is. Uh huh. Oh, so, yeah. Suddenly, all the, the accretion and all the, the, the luminosity happens, uh, is dominated by, by the lamp. And okay. if, if you remember when we saw the accretion rate and even the luminosity, you saw that there was a cyclic uh, behavior, right? right? And that behavior is the lamp getting in phase with the black holes. Uh, so each, each accretion ah, yes. event, sure. that means uh, a, a burst in, mm -hmm. in, nice. in the light curves. So, Beautiful. so we are very interested on this, on this lamp and this arises as a nonlinear phenomena of magnetized uh, turbulence. So we can also, we can only capture this with, with these kind of simulations. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the initial B field? So we'll initialize the B field in the usual way with uh, just the polar okay. uh, lines around the, the, the second binary. And, this structure quickly breaks and we, we start to get the toroidal feel as well and a lot of uh, turbulent uh, instabilities. Um, so we consider this is not dependent on the initial on the initial, uh, on the initial um, field. magnetic field. We expect this is, as I say, a steady state that the system reaches independently of the, of the initial field. Yeah, but that's something to, to test uh, yeah. as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, the parameter space is, is pretty is pretty large. We have the mass ratio, the spins, the equation of states, and the, the initial magnetic field, and the, the thickness of the torus. I mean, the, the parameter space is quite is quite uh, large. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 lo I lost the count. <laughs> <laughs> After two, I lose it. <laughs> yeah, so. Very good. Cool. So in this section, we, we focus a lot on the lamp and yeah. you can see on, on the right, we have some uh, measures of the position of the lamp on top, our lamp. Uh, we see how it migrates uh, a bit outwards. This is in units yeah. of, of uh -huh. the binary separation. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the angular frequency of the lamp on, on the middle uh, in terms of the angular frequency of the binary. Yes. It's a bit slower than the than the binary, mm -hmm. like uh, one fourth, and also the eccentricity of the of the orbit of the lamp. Ooh, nice. Okay. Yeah. It's the log of these. So ten to the minus three. Okay. Yeah. And and the plot on the left, figure ten, that is is uh, the criteria we we have to determine when the lamp form. So we are very here the M equal one mode over the M equal zero mode. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can see that the M equal one mode grows. And when this ratio is about 0.2, we say, okay, we have a lamp because M equal one is, is, is significant. Got it, okay. Uh -huh. And there is a given uh, spread in when the lamp forms. You can see that uh, the, the vertical lines, the vertical dashed lines, Yes. Is when the lamp form in each of our runs. We have uh, five runs. Uh -huh, yes. And there is a given a spread on when it, it forms sure. because it's a chaotic uh -huh. okay. uh, process. But okay. but when it, once it forms, it just keeps keeps growing and never goes away. What's up with the uh, the outlier green curve here? We got somebody that doesn't reach the same uh, 
same ratio, right? All the other ones end up here at around 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, but it's just because it, it, the lamp formed later in this in this run. So if we increase the oh, sure. mm -hmm. time, we have actually evolved this for 15 times 10 to the four. Yeah. So probably if we extend the x-axis, it will it will catch so, up with the other ones. It started late. Okay. Mm -hmm. late, late bloomer. Mm -hmm. Right. What, what's very interesting is that although the lamp forms at different times, if we plot, uh, so if you come back to the figure on the right, uh -huh. so here the radius of the lamp or the angular frequency, it's all plotted against T minus uh, lamp formation. Oh, on the lamp. Okay. Yeah. And Got it. so if you refer everything to the yeah. Moment of lamp formation, the, the the behavior is quite quite the same. Okay. Uh, cool. So once it forms, it it seems to be very predictable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's something very interesting we we also found. Cool. Um, so yeah, ever since uh, we found this, the lamp is kind of uh, we're, we're focusing on on the on the lamp and on the the electromagnetic signatures of this of this. Um, of this over density and and yeah, I don't know how we are doing with with time. I usually <laughs> forgot about time when I start talking about this. <laughs> so so did you did you in in this article um, mm -hmm. did you do the electromagnetic signatures? You use some sort of a ray trace or a, um, you know radi radiation transport or something along those lines? Yeah, great, great question. So in this article, as I said, we are focusing on the on the circumbinary okay. and and we just uh, presented this metric and proved that we can use arbitrary spins and, and proved that it works great. Um, and that's that's for this paper. On the next paper that actually it's also published, Yay. we, yeah. So I invite you to write oh. uh, the second author in this paper is the first author of the of the next one. <laughs> well, we, will, uh, we, will, we will put a link to that uh, second paper in the description below the video here. That sounds great, yeah. So in the second paper, we actually include the black holes on the grid. You see oh, that okay. we have we have excised the black holes in this article, mm -hmm. but in the next article, we actually include the black holes in the okay. grid, mm -hmm. and we explore the effect of spins on the on mm -hmm. the mini disks, these disks that form around each black hole. The effects of the spins are are dramatic near the black holes. Um, we actually get some kind of jet structures arising ah. uh, that form like a helical uh, structure, which is which is very cool. Oh, yes, right, 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 right. Yeah, and we can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I want to emphasize that we can do this now that we have spins uh, as a mm -hmm. as a parameter. Mm -hmm. uh, previous approximate metrics um, cannot do spins. It was too too complicated analytically. Um, so that's one of the strengths of this of this metric we we propose in this paper. Cool, very cool. So in this second paper, we as I said, we have the black holes on the grid, and in the third paper, we have actually do the ray tracing and all the okay all the the spectrum of this um, of this system. Well, um, we just may have to get you back and talk about that second one or third one. Yeah, yeah, I really <laughs> encourage you to. <laughs> I'm part of the team in those papers. I'm not the, yeah. the first author, so I, I encourage you to. Yeah, no, it's they, a. They are all great, great, great people. Fascinating topic. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And then on the appendix, uh, we again, well, we have two appendices. The yeah. first one is about uh, just uh, diagnostics that are usually known in the literature, uh -huh. but and Appendix B, we wanted to uh, prove what we found, um, or at least show how what we found makes sense in terms of the post-Newtonian expansion of, of spinning it. binaries. Uh -huh. So exactly. after all this uh, derivation of how does the, the uh, we, what we wanted to, to see is how was the, the gravitational potential of uh, a spinning binaries. Uh, so we have all the PN derivation here. Yep. And at, at the bottom, we find uh, at the end, we, and there B15, we find the yes. effective potential for a spinning uh, mm -hmm. binary. We have the first term is just the, the, the usual 
yeah. Newtonian term, then we have a quadrupolar term from the from the black hole separation, this B there. Yep. And then the angular momentum uh, terms. But what's very interesting is that we have the spins of the black hole. There is the, this A, that it's in the fourth term. Yep. So um, with this A, which depends on the sign in, in terms of its aligned or contour line, we proved that uh, it makes sense what we found, that if the black if the spins are negative, if they are contour aligned, with the angular momentum, then the effective potential it's it's more steep, and we have yes. uh, more 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 attraction. Awesome. On the opposite, if the the, the spins are, are aligned or parallel to the angular momentum, you have a, an extra term that actually works against gravity, works repelling matter, uh -huh. cool. and that's what we found on the simulations, and and that's what uh, just for, for to give the full picture. Uh -huh. No, it's very nice to be able to, uh, you know, relate, you know, big 3D calculations to um, <clears throat> something you know and love, like a post-Newtonian or something like that. See what exactly, you're... yeah. Very good. Very good. Right. Very awesome. Yeah. Federico, cool. thank mm -hmm. you very much for walking us through the first paper in this series. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you once again. Um, <clears throat> so you mentioned it a little bit um, there toward the end of additional papers in this, in this series. Um, and so I want to ask, given where we are now in 2022, uh, you know, where do we go over the next uh, two to five years? Are there additional calculations planned? Are there potentially some observations that could mm -hmm. be uh, on, on, you know, uh, merging or colliding galaxies? Uh, maybe something with JWST or uh, Nancy Roman or something along those lines. Um, mm -hmm. So just sort of where do we go over the next, let's say, two to five years on this topic? Mm -hmm. Sure. So... Focusing on precisely on the system, on supermassive binary black holes, there are a lot of things to, to expect um, and a lot of great things to, to expect. Um, first of all, the, we want to see the, the gravitational waves. Uh, so we want to see what pulsar timing has to, 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 to find in the next years. They, I think in the next yeah. five years, they probably will uh, find something already. Some, uh, I mean, these are gravitational waves, but with huge, wavelengths uh, of the order of light years. So that's why you need uh, pulsars as um, for, for your, I mean, the distance from the earth to the pulsar as, as the interferometer as the- Correct, correct. Yep, yep. So I'm really excited to cool. hear about that. Uh, if someone is interested, uh, should check uh, Nanograph, for instance. Uh, that's oh, yeah. the collaboration that is following this. But well, coming back to, to our article in also in the electromagnetic domain, there's been uh, a lot of, of findings. Um, so you know that close supermassive black hole systems aren't um, proved to, to be uh, out there. We have a couple of candidates, of, of great candidates, but there's still discussion if, if we, we know actually two supermassive black holes that are on the, uh, very close to merge. Okay. And one of these candidates is OJ287. Um, so the, the way we can we can know that these are two black holes is uh, by observing an AGN, an active galactic nucleus, mm -hmm. and, and looking at how the light curve uh, varies in, in time, of the time scales of the light curve. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if there is a variation, if the variation is getting uh, kind of... Um, uh, it's moving to higher frequencies. Uh, you can interpret that that's that's the the, the black holes getting together. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so we have that for OJ two eighty seven, and January this year we have another paper uh, which um, also found that the the X ray emission from an IGN was uh, has a given variability in time, sure. and this variability moved to years to months. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. They did the, the interpretation that there is actually a very a supermassive black hole, a, a smaller black hole orbiting around, uh, and that at, um, yeah, and, and they are getting together. On, they are close to merger. Uh, about they even say within a year. And so we're we're following very close these these observations, and we are trying to interpret them in, in face of what we all discussed uh, today. 
Um, so very exciting for me um, uh, scenario mm -hmm. for the future. <laughs> and in our case, we're uh, since we do the, the simulations, we are trying to to repeat the the the, the models that they are they are suggesting. So mm -hmm. we are trying to move to different mass ratios, mm -hmm. moving to systems that don't stay on the equator but actually orbit uh, in, in all of crazy uh, crazy things. Yeah, um, and of course exploring different spins as now that we we can. Very nice, very cool. Well, I really yeah. look forward to this. Uh, Fighting field developing over the next couple of years will be very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very, very interesting field. Um, I think it's yes, it's about to. Um, I mean, we we found a, a lot of great results from the stellar black hole binary system, and I think in the next few years the same will happen for for supermassive nice. for the supermassive case. Go, Lisa. Yes, of course. And then <laughs> I didn't mention, didn't even mention it, but. That's a, a huge Very expectation cool. as well. Very cool. Yeah. Federico, thank you so much once again. Okay. Thank you, Frank. And hope to um I hope I, I've been clear. <laughs> and Very clear. It's been I haven't good. talked uh, too much and too, no, too quick. <laughs> it's the excitement. <laughs> well, one likes to be excited about one's astronomy. And yeah. so that will do on this one, everyone. And I hope this made your astronomy day just a little bit better. And we will see you on the next one. Bye bye.